welcome to all of you today very interesting topic we are going to deal with in this chapter of molecular basis of inheritance that is dna fingerprinting now dna fingerprinting is unique in the sense that no two individual in this world except monozygotic twins have the same dna fingerprinting that means it is unique to everyone and we as we all know that uh, the human beings are a result of sexual reproduction and the zygote is formed because of the fusion of the male and the female parents uh, gametes that is the sperm and the ovum so as a result it's uh, very unique in the sense that the individual which is born or the individual whose identity we are working with with respect to the dna fingerprinting will be matching with that of the two parents that is both father as well as mother now the uh, need for the dna fingerprinting came into existence the reason is because when the early criminal investigation used to be done or any identification with respect to any individual used to be done that was with respect to our fingerprinting see every one of us we have a unique fingerprinting and uh, it was also very much you know uh, uh, solid evidence in the sense to find out the um, culprit uh, with respect to crime uh, if we could know the fingerprint prints on the uh, objects in which the criminal has touched as well as matching it with that of the individual who is a suspect but there is a chance of changing the fingerprinting how can we do so by means of surgery we can uh, change our fingerprints even with, with the help of certain chemicals like acids and all we can uh, you know uh, the markings present on our fingers we can change them we can alter them so there is no fixed you know way to say that yes the fingerprinting is matching with this person so this person is the culprit or this person is the one which is suspect so to remove all these you know kind of contradictions it was in the year 1984 alec jeffrey in united kingdom proposed this technique of dna fingerprinting which is totally unique to an individual so far in our human genome concept we have come to know that every human being is having the dna sequence or the nucleotide sequences which matches with each other almost 99.9% only 0.1% we differ from each other and in this 0.1% which differs from each other that we show so much of variation with respect to each other even if we are the human race but we are so different from each other even if we are in india the indians are so different from each other so it is because of that just one 0.1% difference in the nucleotide base sequences now it has been noticed when the dna you know sequencing is done there are certain regions in the dna which does not code for any proteins so those are the non coding sequences so the non coding sequences since they do not produce any kind of you know impact on the phenotypic expression of an organism so if at all there is any kind of mutation happening on the, on those areas which includes the areas near your centromere the areas in the telomeric region in the heterochromatin region so these are the various you know locations whose uh, genes are non coding genes that means they do not translate into, into uh, itself into a protein so if there is any kind of mutation happening over there that will hardly have any impact on the person's phenotypic expression but if those repeated sequences which are present in this non coding regions undergoes a mutation then definitely there will be a change in the pattern or in the polymorphism of those areas that can result into change in the banding pattern of the dna and that was a concept which was kept into mind for doing the dna fingerprinting so this dna fingerprinting which was you know proposed or which was developed by that of alec jeffrey came into india by the help of two more scientists is it was dr kashyap and dr lalji singh these two people introduced dna fingerprinting in first in hyderabad uh, that is cell and molecular biology uh, department and that is how it became famous or it became more you know in use in india also now what are the various steps to be followed in case of dna fingerprinting that we are going to see today see dna fingerprinting can be done by any body cells any somatic body cells in your gametes in anywhere you uh, talk about the all the cells will have the same kind of genetic sequences so uh, the uh, need is just a living cell it can be from your blood sample it can be from the semen it can be from the root hair cells it can be from the skins 
okay it can be from your nails so any body parts which is having a living cell in it that can uh, that can be you know taken as a sample for doing the dna testing or dna profiling or dna fingerprinting as it is commonly known as so the first step in the dna fingerprinting is to collect the sample now here the sample is blood sample so that's why i have written here blood sample it can be any sample of the person whose dna fingerprinting is to be done the next thing is that the dna which is present in these cells has to come out from the nucleus isn't it so what what should be done is that the isolation of the dna has to be done so the isolation of the dna is done with the help of various kinds of enzymes now these enzymes are the molecular scissors which will be you know uh, isolating them as well as cutting them into fragments because dna is quite long in case of eukaryotic cells so first the dna isolation is done uh, rupturing of the cell is, uh, is done and then the dna is isolated this dna is further treated by the help of the restriction enzymes which will be cutting the dna into smaller fragments now when these fragments are done now these fragments are separated by a process which is called as your gel electrophoresis now what is this gel electrophoresis is that a plate is taken a glass plate which is you know covered or coated with that of the agarose gel and electricity is run depending upon the that is your uh, size of the dna fragments the dna fragments get separated the lighter one the smaller one will be separated first followed by the heavier one at the bottom so that is the gel electrophoresis by which the dna strands or the dna um, uh, that is uh, your pieces fragments are separated uh, with respect to the size and after that what happens is that this uh, um, uh, agarose gel is transferred to a nitrocellulose paper or a nylon paper it is just a bundle or heap of nitrocellulose paper is kept on this agarose gel so it you can say it gets a in uh, implanted or imprinted on that of the nitrocellulose paper or that of the nylon paper the next thing is that in the lab in the lab um, uh, artificially uh, this uh, dna probe is prepared dna probe is prepared with respect to the vntrs now what are these vntrs variable number of tandem repeats as i told you there are various sequences in the dna which are non coding so there there is repetitive dna nucleotide based uh, uh, nucleotide sequences which which does not code for any protein so with respect to that what could be the you know the possible um, that is your complementary basis that is radioactive with the help of radioactive isotopes they are produced in the laboratory those repeated sequences like for example t t t t t a a a g g g c c c like this they are prepared and they are radioactively labeled because we have to see them we have to see the banding pattern so if it is radioactive then we can take it into the x ray plate and after after the x ray plate the x ray plate when it is subjected to the radiation or to the light we can see it the negative when it is developed by means of auto radiography we can develop that x-ray plate and we can see it against the light and we can see the various banding patterns in it and that banding pattern is totally unique it is not going to match with any individual my dna banding pattern is not going to match with yours yours is not going to match with me but yes if you are going to talk about the banding pattern of a child with its parents definitely the banding pattern is going to match 50 percent with his father and 50 50 percent with his mother now what happens next is that when this is transferred to that of the nitrocellulose paper after that with the help of certain alkaline chemicals the dna fragments which are transferred they are separated or they are broken into single strand they are separated into single strand now after they are separated into single strand then in the lab the dna probes are made these are radioactive dna probes which have the repeat sequence with respect to the VNTRs present in the DNA fragments now when they are sprayed or when this nitrocellulose paper which is having the single stranded DNA after getting treated it with alkaline chemicals are subjected to that of the probes then these probes bind to the specific DNA sequences on the membrane and as a result there is a complementary base pairing so when the DNA probes having the radioactive DNA probes gets associated with the single stranded dna and then the excess dna of course is washed off and the next stage is that this uh, dna 
probes which has been attached with that of the single stranded uh, DNA fragments of the individual whose identification we are going to do with respect to the DNA fingerprinting is now you know uh, they are um, uh, subjected to that of the x-ray film okay now they they are uh, subjected to that of the x-ray film and now what happens is that so that we can detect uh, by means of the radioactive pattern the DNA banding uh, which is uh, present in the individuals DNA fragments which we have received as a result of isolation and separation of the DNA from the specimen of that individual now this x-ray plate which was you know pressed uh, against uh, that of the uh, nitrocellulose membrane uh, so that the impression uh, gets transferred to that of the x-ray plate is now developed to make the pattern visible on it and uh, when we see it against the light we can see this kind of different banding patterns these banding patterns is totally unique to this individual and if it is uh, the in uh, the that is the identification of a suspect with respect to any crime investigation and if we have two three individuals who are under the you know um, that is the under the uh, that is your area of uh, criminal investigation if their dna uh, pattern is done and uh, the on the place of the crime the dna samples which has been collected from the various blood samples or whatever it is that is matched with that of the suspect persons and if it gets matched then we can understand that who the individual is who is responsible for that particular murder or particular crime of that uh, you know uh, place this was the same uh, uh, that is you can say the identification pattern which was utilized to identify rajiv gandhi's uh, murder or suspect so to know the identity of the person his name was Dhanu, that he was a real culprit who was the human bomb responsible for the uh, assassination of our late Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. It was this DNA fingerprinting which was tested from the uh, site where this bomb blast took place. So not only that for the criminal investigation, sometimes the parent of a child uh, can also be identified by means of this DNA fingerprinting. If we have a child who's, you know, parent, whether uh, well, that person is his a father or the person is his mother that also can be identified by the help of the DNA fingerprinting because father's 50% uh, banding pattern will be matching with that of the child similarly mother's 50% will be matching with that of the child so it is a sure shot technique of finding the identification of a individual so that is the beauty of this DNA fingerprinting and by the help of this uh, DNA fingerprinting we can uh, do many more things it is not only uh, that um, uh, we can do this dna fingerprinting with respect to human beings we can do it with respect to other organisms also and as far as human beings are concerned maybe by the help of this uh, dna fingerprinting we can even be getting to know the better uh, idea about uh, the uh, that is occurrence of any kinds of you know genetic disorder with respect to any kind of uh, polymorphism shown in the um, dna banding pattern of the person who is suffering from any kind of genetic disorder and that can be you know uh, genetically uh, identified and uh, with respect to that the treatment can be done so this is uh, about the DNA fingerprinting how the process is done by means of various steps and what is the application of DNA fingerprinting in the field of molecular biology with that we have come to the end of this chapter that is the molecular basis of inheritance the next chapter to be followed is the human diseases chapter which we will take up on in our next class.